Hey everyone, welcome back to John Codes. We are back at the desk, we are back in the shell, we are doing Unix stuff. And today I wanted to do a video about a joke that if you've spent enough time on the internet, you've probably seen. And it usually goes something like, hey, I'm trying to remove a file. And then people give you this command or some kind of variation like this or something like this, where you're trying to run the remove command, people are asking for help and as a joke, people in forums or Unix chat rooms tell people without the knowledge to run commands like this. Now, let's break these down real quick. Warning, do not run any of these commands on your computer. They will destroy your computer. They basically will remove all of the files, all system files, and your computer will be completely destroyed. You'll have to reinstall your operating system. So warning, do not run any of these. I'm gonna be running them in a virtual machine to show you what happens and what they do. So basically what this one is saying is remove recursively with force the root file system. Similarly, this one is doing it with a glob. That's what the star is, is it's essentially globbing for all files under the root file system. Similar to this one is saying, remove all based on glob. This one's a little safer because it really can depend based on your distribution where you run it from, but this will essentially remove all files based on that glob. Okay, so cool. Those are like really dangerous and bad commands to run. But I'm curious what would happen if you were to run them. So here I have a very basic Ubuntu virtual machine setup. I'm using something called Vagrant. Vagrant is a virtual machine client that can plug into something like VirtualBox or other virtual machine hypervisors. And essentially it will provision a virtual machine for me start running it, I can SSH into the virtual machine from this command line, and then start doing stuff. If you're curious about this code and how I built this, I will have a link to the GitHub where you can essentially have the exact same virtual machine as me. So let's build our virtual machine. I can do make VM, which I have a make file defining some vagrant commands. So this is gonna destroy any virtual machines I have and then build a new Vagrant virtual machine. All right, so that finished building. And now what I can do is use another make file command I have, make SSH, and that will SSH me onto the virtual machine. So here we are, we're on the command line on the Vagrant virtual machine. Now this is the Ubuntu Bionic release. Uh, it's one that I'm pretty familiar with, one I've used quite frequently, but this is a basic Ubuntu image. So first, let's try to run the command, rmrf slash, and that is just the root at the file system. Now we initially get a fail safe. It is dangerous to operate recursively on the root file path. Now it does give us a no preserve root, which would enable us to do this. A lot of distributions, mostly because of this joke and really because you would never want to do this, have built in these fail safes into the actual operating itself. But let's pass that by. RMRF, no preserve root, and the root file path. And this just starts going. I can see it's removing a lot of source and share files from system, user, var, necessary operating system files for this Ubuntu image to run. Now we end up getting a lot of cannot remove and cannot access. And a lot of this is because many of these files on the root file path have root user permissions. So let's take a look at that. Let's head over to root file path. Here we are. And let's take a long list look at what we have here. We can see that most of these are owned by root and belong to the root group. Now, I did the LL command, which is sort of an alias for the long list. And this gives us a lot of information about ownership, what we can do with files. The first character tells us it's a directory. The next three tell us what user permissions this has. So the user, the root user, has read, write, and executable permissions. The next three are group permissions. So the group has read, but not write, but they do have executable rights. 
And finally, the last three characters are permissions for anybody. So anybody can read and anybody can execute, but not everybody can write. And writing would include deleting. So when you're looking at file directories and trying to determine what you can do with certain files and certain directories, looking at the permissions is really important. Again, these next characters tell us the owner and the group that they belong to. So most of these files belong to the root super user. So just to take a look at what would happen here, let's become the super user. So I can do sudo dash i and I become the root user. So now I am user number one, I am super user on this virtual machine, and I should be able to rm, rf, all files. Again, I get that warning. I can bypass that warning and fire away. And it starts going. Again, we're getting more files deleted, but still a lot cannot remove on these. Many operating systems have built-in safeguards for not removing critical operating system files. So let's exit out of this Ubuntu virtual machine and try it on a virtual machine that would give us some more flexibility to actually see what would happen if we destroyed the computer. So now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a CentOS 7 VirtualBox Vagrant machine. And with this machine, we should be able to basically delete everything and see it get put in a failed state. So here we are with our CentOS virtual machine and we can try running that command. Let's become root user. And let's run rmrf slash again we have this flag not permitted and slash now we get a bunch of process files that it's trying to delete and eventually it gets to a spot where it kind of freezes so let's see what kind of damage we did let's head over to the root folder and try to list things the ls command is not found all everything from the bin was essentially deleted all the necessary files to basically run the operating system. Things that were busy or in use couldn't get deleted, like proc files or or the boot drive, all kinds of that stuff. So let's go into bin. We don't even have a bin folder anymore. Let's see what we get in var. And again, this is gonna be really difficult since we don't have the ls command, but you can see that really the operating system kind of becomes unusable in a state that would be nearly impossible to recover without just a total reinstall of the operating system. Well, I hope you found this informative. Again, do not run these commands on your computer. You will destroy your computer and have to reinstall the operating system. But thanks for watching. I hope you found it entertaining. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see everybody next time.